Hey guys, Paul Pluto on the Paul Pluto channel. Paid wristwatch reviews. Paid wristwatch reviews. I'm doing paid review 20A50. 20A50. And this review is for MC. MC. Quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing a paddock. Five, no, I'm not. This is a JJ Lecoutre, JJ Lecoutre, Reverso Grand Date. Love this watch. Okay, let's jump straight in because this is a bit of a long one. Let's go, dear Archie. Hope you are well and safe. I've sent you 50 bucks via PayPal for a paid review. Big fan of your content. Uh, been watching for many years. Finally got around to sending you this email. Link to a a uh, pick of my collection. Let me start with some background. I'm 39 in a couple of months. I'm an IT director living in London. My love of watches started as a child. I have vivid memories of being fascinated with watches going back to the Casio data bank days in the 80s. As a kid, my parents bought me several Casios, which I fell in love with. It was what was going on inside the watch that was so intriguing. As I got older, the traditional, the, this transitioned into and grew into wanting to learn more about mechanical watches. Looking back, as a young child, the Omega, Omega logo seemed to be etched into my mind. My grandfather had an Omega in the 80s with the classic red box. That sticks out as a huge memory. I don't know what model it was, but the memory certainly contributed to me wanting to learn more about the Swiss watch industry and watches in general. The heritage of some of the brands and learning about historic icons of the wristwatch world, not to mention my mum's cousin was a watch dealer. So lots of watch talk at family gatherings. Seiko featured heavily in my life for three, three reasons. First one, in the mid-90s, my uncle gave a Seiko as a gift. It was a dress watch style piece. Don't know the reference. I still have it, but it's knackered. Uh, number two, my grandfather gave my dad a Seiko as a gift on my parents' wedding day. All steel dress watch, which my dad still holds close to his heart given its sentimental value. And finally, my uncle owned several Seikos and was always talking about them when I was growing up. As you can see, I've been around watches, albeit not super high-end stuff, but intriguing nonetheless. Fast forward to the late 90s and my uncle bought a Breitling. It was a cult something or other. Can't remember, but he told me he spent £700 on it. At the time, I thought, shit, what, that's a lot of money. My upbringing was very modest, and I grew up in a blue-color family and rarely came across anything of that value. Being in my late teens at the time, this was when I started to really understand the brands, the quality, the pricing, and started to look deeper into Breitling. I had always had my eye on Rolex, but Rolex would be the aspirational piece to get one day, hence I wanted to look at something a little more realistic first. There was something about Breitling that resonated with me. I remember lusting after the Super Ocean after I ordered a brochure at the age of 18, knowing full well it would be some time before I'd be able to afford to own one. Went off to uni and put the watch buying plans on hold. Came back from uni and before i started my job and after amassing all this knowledge of doing a shitload of research i settled on a plan i wanted a breitling before 30 a rolex before 40 a paddock before 50. so far i'm on track with the plan and have added some other pieces during the journey too but see below for the full story um in 2004, I got my first job in IT. Five years later, 2009, age 28, bought the Breitling Super Ocean. It's an A17360, 800 pound, used box and papers. Fucking love this watch. It was pretty beat up when I got it, but that was part of its charm. It was this thing of beauty underneath all the dings and scratches. And when the light caught the AR coating on the Doom Crystal, just right, it made me smile and I feel like a fighter pilot and an F1 driver. Okay, let's not push it too fucking far. Ah, uh, the blue dial, I just fell in love with it. Had the, uh, had that thing on my wrist for seven years straight. Wore it on the professional bracelet. 
Breitling bracelets are just stunning. I beat the shit out of it. Go into 2016 after wearing it a lot. It was time for a service. Initially, it was gaining a few minutes a week, but then the fucking thing altogether stopped, and it looked like dog shit as well. Needed a proper polish. I had two cousins' wedding and two stags to go to that year, so I pretty pissed. I was pretty pissed that I didn't have her on my wrist. Had no choice. Had to give the watch up for a service. Brightly told me it would be ten week. Would be a ten week turnaround. I had to buy another watch at this point. The withdrawal symptoms would have killed me, and I couldn't turn up at this wedding. With all my arsehole relatives in their fucking Rolexes without something decent on my wrist. 2016, age 35, bought the Breitling Super Ocean 2. A17365, 1900 Great British Pounds, used box and papers. Saw so this is the ideal purchase to serve as a worthy substitute for my trusty old Super Ocean whilst it was in for service. And it was for decent money, bought it. On virtually new calf leather strap, Minty went for this one and not the Super Ocean release between... Okay, okay. Who cares? Who cares with the numbers? It doesn't matter. Fucking hated that watch. The Okay, you, you hated that. Okay. In the same year, for some stupid reason, I went and bought a tag. 2016, age 35, bought a tag, Formula One. 1,100 pounds new. Maybe it was the fact that I'm an F1 fan or we go karting on the stag dues. I don't know. But as soon as I bought the shitter, I had buyer's remorse. The bracelet, the fucking bracelet, piece of shit. Oh my God, what shit. Anyhow, went to the wedding, wore the Super Ocean, went to the stags, wore the tag. After buying the tag, uh, DOS, uh, after and doing the stag DOS, I was within the return period for the tag. Took it back to the AD for a refund. I thought, fuck it, I hate this piece. It was an impulse buy, I'll send it back. The bastards wouldn't accept it back. There was a tiny, tiny little mark on the bracelet, not even a scratch anyway. <laughs> I had to now love it or flip it. No one wanted this shit, I couldn't shift it. But it ended up growing on me, and now I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. Well, I don't blame him. I, I would have told you to get fucked as well, to be completely frank with you. It's not just a fucking lending service, you... <coughs> That's not quite how it goes, you know. I don't blame him. Don't blame him at all. My original Brightling came back from service. I tell you what, when I went to pick it up, I didn't recognize the watch. I had to check the serial number to see it was mine. Couldn't believe it was the same watch, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward... A couple of years, 2018, age 37, bought the Rolex Explorer 214270, 4,600 Great British Pounds, used box and papers. Mint, I mean stunning, super sexy watch. I got to the point where I thought, fuck it, I'm going to go for it. Rolex fuckers, I went and bought the Explorer and I haven't regretted it one bit. I thought, fuck waiting until I'm 40, I can pull the trigger. Prices are going up, I can't lose. I also have a couple of Seikos, as you can see in the pic, the Jade Monster and an all-black Seiko 5. Just to be clear, the Seikos are beaters and I wear the all-black one when I don't want to attract attention to my watches. So that's my story and my collection. I was just, uh, I was still, I will still get the Patek in a few years, but the original plan still underpins my collection. And holds true. A Breitling before 30, check. A Rolex before 40, check. A Paddock before 50, it will happen. As well as a Paddock, I do want to one day own the Amiga Moon on the watch. The Tag Hoyer Monaco Steve McQueen reissue without tag on the face, just Hoyer. That's the Calibre 11. Breitling Navitimer, Tudor Black Bay and a Grand Seiko. My question for you is, what do you think of my current current pieces yes 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 what do i think fuck me dead you you certainly had war and peace going there jesus but it's 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 made for a it's made for a a a good story i 
I don't. I quite enjoyed reading that story there. He's got a lot of enthusiasm. I. I. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. I. I don't mind the the, the, the the pieces there. I'm just pulling up your pick you sent me. You sent me fucking how many picks? I would have liked just one pick with all you. Well, you actually you did send me that. You sent me that as well. Uh, okay, so forget the Seiko garbage. Seiko garbage. The garbage. We don't need the garbage. The garbage doesn't really um, fit in. Much there's not much point with the gar badge, but yes, yes, I I must admit the 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 um okay so you've got them okay fair enough fair enough um look I quite like the um the Rolex the Brightlings two couple of Brightlings and you've got the uh, the tag there yes yes there's there's a start of a decent collection. Uh, forget the Seiko garbage. Forget the Seiko garbage. It's starting to take shape. This is what collecting is. It's a journey. It's a journey through life. Given that I've achieved what I set out to achieve with Breitling and Rolex, well, it's, it's not that hard, man. We're in the fucking first world. We're in the fucking first world. It's not. It's not that great. Let's 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 not go overboard here, okay? Uh, given that I've achieved what I set out to achieve with the Breitling and the Rolex, okay, I will wait for the right moment in life before investing in a paddock. I've recently been promoted to mark this occasion and to mark my 40th next year. I want to buy a piece. What do you think I should buy? Budget 6,000 Great British Pounds. I'm thinking something one and done until I buy a paddock in the next five to ten. I want one more piece before the paddock, something that can take a beating, but would also look good with a shirt. Not a chronograph and nothing with a diver's bezel. Ooh, okie dokie. Uh, what are your thoughts on the IWC NG500501 big inch display case back in-house movement? I know you had the, yes, I had the, the 3227. That's correct. That's 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 exactly it. That's that is exactly what I had, which I I think that's the quintessential IWC. But um, you you don't seem to. Everybody's got their own fucking opinions. Um, Okie dokie. So so what do I think of the the IWC five zero zero five zero one? Um, I prefer to get a three two two seven personally. Yeah, I I would prefer that. Okay. Um, I I gotta be totally okay. Let's come back to that display case back in house movement. I know you had the three two two seven and IWC has tanked on the used market. But I don't intend to sell if I bought one. I love the Ingenua and the big Ingenua even more. I'm 6'4 and would, it would wear well. The Ingenua seems sophisticated, understated, under the radar, and looks like something you could wear daily without being a target, like a sub or something else. Well, if you're big fuck, you just punch them in the head. Wouldn't you punch them? That's all you do. I like the Royal Oak and the Nautilus. I'm drawn to Gerald Gentry design. Thanks and your thoughts. Keeping uh, and keep doing what you're doing. Cheers. MC. So I got to be totally honest with you. Don't take this the wrong way, MC, but I think some of your tastes are appalling. I think some of the tastes you have are appalling, appalling, appalling. Okay. Um, you've, you've made some dumb choices. I don't know why you bought the tag and too many. You want to get the AB reference bright links, not the A reference. The A reference, they're just using off-the-shelf kind of movements. Okay, they do have finishing done to them, but you understand what I'm, I am saying there. I, I would say, okay, let's firstly, let's talk about this. Your collection. The, let's, let's just go through the pieces just to give you a bit of a wrap on these here. So the, I, I gotta tell you, man, man, you, you, you fucking made some bad choices. You, you, I, I don't understand some of the choices. The Explorer one, 
39 mil Explorer 1, that is the crowning achievement. Yes, sir. You, I will forgive mistakes because you bought that Rolex. It is beautiful. The Breitling Super Ocean, uh, I actually like it. I like it. I like it indeed. It looks, it looks nice. It looks nice. And you've also, <coughs> you've got the, the other Super Ocean. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's also, that's cool. They're, 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 those are two cool Breitlings, yes. The Tag Heuer Formula One, I gotta tell you, in all honesty, I don't hate it. I know it's not a top end, uh, but let's face it, it's a very cool modern looking watch. It's got, it has, it is sassy. I think it's sassy. I, I don't hate it. I'm not telling people to buy the fucking thing, but, I actually don't don't mind that. I think it's a for for a youngish guy. You're only young. I think that's actually quite a stylish watch. I don't and I don't blame them for not fucking letting you return it. Fuck me dead. Fuck me dead. You, that would piss me off. Yes. No, I don't blame them at all. I don't blame them at all. Um now <clears throat> the Seiko uh, just ditch the Seikos. Come on, man. They're fucking garbage. They're garbage, okay? You don't need to send me pictures of your fucking Seikos. They're garbage, okay? Please, man. Please. What do I think? Uh, okay, so so you got a Rolex. I I would say seriously. Six thousand great British pounds. I I would say, look. I would say. I would say, seriously, if you could get a Rolex, that would be the smarter way to go. These Ingenuers, IWCs, they're dogs. If you're going to buy an Ingenuer, you've got to buy a second hand. I think the 3227, much nicer than the 500501. Much nicer, much nicer. Definitely the 3227. Uh, another, another cool, cool one to get there. i got to tell you, another cool cool um one to get i would say to you would be the you don't want a chronograph i was going to say to you why don't you get the tag hoyer the monaco the caliber 11 that's not a terrible that's a chronograph that's the only thing you don't want a chronograph i was going to say if you really want to have a bit of cachet um why don't you why don't you get why don't you get a zenith el primero open heart that you're a big guy i reckon that would be a magic watch column wheel chronograph as for bashing them around you've got to be careful with your watches if you're doing shitty things wear one of those garbage seikos um so that would be my advice i think you've got some nice pieces <clears throat> this the rolex look the difference between absolute fucking garbage and not is the fact that you've got the Explorer 1. I think that is a great watch. That is a very, very cool watch. Um, I would seriously say to you... See, I'd like to say the Moon Watch, the Amiga Speedmaster. See, the watches you've listed here are really cool. What would I get? I think, I think, honestly, I think... Actually, the Inji has got a bit of leg substance to it. I kind of like the engine. Yes, I think the 3227, that's where I'd go. That's the watch. It's a big watch. I think you'd love it. It's a bit top heavy, but I think out of all this other stuff you've mentioned, that's, that's, that's where I would be going. That's exactly where I'd be going. I'd be going for that. So, yeah, I reckon, I reckon the Inji would be best. Um... I gotta be honest with you, you don't have the best taste, so you're better off to listen to the pontiff. Get either the 3227 IWC, I think a Zenith El Primero Open Heart Chronomeister 1969, like I had, beautiful. I think you're a bit blingy sort of guy, maybe a Breguet Type 20. No, that's a chronograph, you don't want chronographs, fuck man. You gotta just, don't worry about, you got appalling taste, okay? Just listen to what I say. Uh, that's what I think you got to do. 
<clears throat> I, I think, thank God you got the Rolex. If you hadn't got the Rolex, it'd be garbage, garbage, garbage. But you got the Rolex. At least there was a bit of sense in you that that got the Rolex. Yeah, that's that's exactly where I would go. So I, I, I'm really happy you got the Rolex. Zenith El Primero. Chrono Meister 1969 Open Heart. Breguet Type 20. IWC 3227, definitely. One of those absolute winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, guys, that's the video for today. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Don't forget, guys, without paid reviews, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Paid reviews keep me here. Without the paid reviews, the Googles have gone down, 30% down, because big companies aren't advertising. Big companies don't advertise. I don't get the payments from Google. So I depend now more than ever on these paid reviews. Paid reviews keep me full time on YouTube. Some people love fruit. Others choose to learn Greek. Some study archaeology. Others are interested in Japanese culture. For some people, everything must work just like a Swiss watch. Others appreciate the creative disarray. There are the frontline type of people and the other type that would prefer to remain in the shadows. Most of us, however, like to study the wonders of everyday life. We cultivate traditional values in the world of modern technologies. One day we choose exclusive restaurants, the other day we go for street food. But there are also those people who don't have that choice at all. Some people have everything they need. And some will never have enough. Generally, a large part of our society has tons of luck when it comes to life. But we also mustn't forget to support the part that hasn't. No matter who you are, what you do, and how much you possess, if you are able to take care of the others, you have your own personal tint. Tint. Watch changes. Together. Hi guys, Archie Luxury, and who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW.